Let the church proclaim. The Spirit of God is among humankind. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an f- ever-flowing stream. has no choice but to bow and chains have no choice but to break shame has no choice but to leave in your presence fear has no choice but to bow chains have no choice but to break shame has no choice but to leave in your presence fear has no choice but to bow Chains have no choice but to break. Shame has no choice but to leave in your presence. Fear has no choice but to bow. Chains have no choice but to break. Shame has no choice but to leave. Continue with an opening acclamation. I have a part and you have a part. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. And welcome to you, everybody. I'm Rustin. I'm the pastor here. And welcome to our skeleton crew here at 622 Second Street uh, putting this together. And welcome to you online who are watching, who are part of Vox, and those of you who are just looking in to figure out what this church is about. Vox Day Community is a church that is just gathered around Jesus, and we guide people into a flourishing life of being fully alive and fully loved in God's unshakable kingdom. At this service, we're going we're gonna to do a few simple things. I've got a few announcements for you. I have a word of encouragement, and then we're going to pray a bit, and we're going to sing another song, and then go with a blessing. So 
Let's start like this. Three announcements. The first is uh, words to build a life on. This is a teaching series that I'm doing a, as a, a conversation with a friend of mine, John Bowles, who's pastor at Beggar's Table Church and Gallery down in the crossroads. And we are basing that on the Sermon on the Mount. In 1934, in a letter to Gandhi, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a German citizen, wrote to Gandhi and said, what we need in our countries is a truly spiritual, living Christian peace movement. Western Christianity must be reborn on the Sermon on the Mount. I happen to agree with him, and so John and I are exploring the Sermon on the Mount together to, to find a footing in this disruptive time. A second thing is Vox University that's happening on Thursday nights at 6.30 with our very own Professor Levi Rennick, who's also a good drummer and percussionist this morning. Uh, and Levi is guiding us through some, I think, really important teachings about how to have an open mind and embrace new ideas and information as we all seek wisdom and truth these days. So join us at 6.30 at vox.church. Just click on Virtual Vox, and there'll be a stream there. Also, in two weeks, on June 28th, a Sunday morning, in place of our Sunday gathering, we are going to going to have a produce distribution morning, and there's going to be information about how you can participate in that, and it's a way for us to be together, kind of, out in the parking lot on that morning, so just watch the communique, uh, which is our e-news. You can sign up for that also at vox.church. So those are some announcements. At this time, I'm going to invite uh, Amy, who's our director of communications, and she's going to come and lead us in a prayer. Hi, my name's Amy Sandwell. Like Rustin said, I'm the Director of Communications, so um, if anybody watching this ever has any questions about what we're doing around here, you can always uh, shoot me an email. It's amy at vox.church, pretty easy to remember. Um, all right, let's, let's pray here. We are not a people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety we are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh at 25 years old, was sent to be a pastor to a poor mining town in southwest Belgium. At that age, he was aspiring to be a preacher like his father. But when he left that post two years later, he was no longer a pastor, but an aspiring artist. The head of the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam said, quote, Van Gogh's formation really was in that church. Those people that he wanted to preach to now became his subject. And that's something that he, he perseveres with in the rest of his career. So as a pastor, Van Gogh began to see these poor and powerless people, these peasants that he lived among, not as simply people to minister to and not as projects to convert or to fix, but as people to be seen and to be heard, each one of them a work of art. The story around that transformation that Van Gogh went through is, is that he was set so set on bringing all these peasants and these destitute poor into the church and including them that he upset, if you can imagine, the supporting parishioners, and they very quickly soured on his ministry among them. Later on, Van Gogh painted a scene of a village, and I keep a copy of this in my uh, study here at Vox, really as a cautionary reminder to myself. And it's a village that is lit with signs of life in many of the houses, all except for one glaring exception right at the center, a building that has no light, and it is a darkened church, a church that is closed off from the light, closed off from the spirit, and get this, as a result, the spirit has gone swirling up into the cosmos, and it has illuminated everything else in the creation. Perhaps Van Gogh realized that the church of his moment had become more a barrier than a doorway 
for people to encounter the living God. And so he turned his focus and energy and career onto observing nature and onto the poor and powerless who became his subjects in so many famous paintings. We, the church, face in our historical moment uh, a contrast between the Spirit's swirling activity in the world and the Spirit's presence in the church. There's an artist I admire who said, the wider culture always amplifies the malfunctions of the church. The wider culture amplifies the malfunctions of the church. So whatever is slightly off in the church will be way off in the city, in the, in the city that surrounds the church. Whenever the church closes its eyes to injustice, whenever the church hides its light under a bushel, the spirit has no course but to swirl up into the cosmos and blow out into the streets and to stir any hearts that are open and listening and to change the world without us and sometimes in spite of us. But that's not God's design for the role of the church. The church is to be a colony of life in the country of death. It's to be a beachhead of the invading kingdom of God, an inevitable kingdom that deploys peacemaking and wisdom and creativity and reconciliation and unflinching truth to expose, confront, and defeat the powers of sin and death, whatever novel or well-worn form that they might take. That's the Spirit's work. And it's supposed to be the work of the church. The church, it said, doesn't have a mission, but the mission of God has a church. So will the church be the church in our moment? The question is, is the spirit here? Is the spirit here? Is the spirit working in our day? This week, the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, which is a denomination founded by slave-owning Baptists who would rather split their denomination than free their slaves issued a statement that said, black lives matter. And that responding to that statement with all lives matter just misses the point. Now that's not exactly a liberal voice saying that if you're still trying to find a way to ignore such statements. Guys, the spirit is swirling in the cosmos, in the streets, and even in denominations. To be a Christian is to be like Christ. That's all it means. It's to find our identity in Christ. And so the church must not associate itself with images and arguments or policies that do damage to the image of God in other people or, or desecrate the creation that we are mandated to cultivate under God. And that includes our public witness, which is, let's face it, largely on social media these days in our, in our time of separation and quarantine. But the kingdom of God is not left versus right. The kingdom is new imagination. The kingdom is God's resources for the healing of God's world. And we are living in, in a moment where the spirit is swirling into the cosmos and convicting us of our collective sin and calling us to repentance and rebirth and giving us eyes to see and ears to hear the pain of our neighbors when we find them injured on the roadside so that we can respond as neighbors and bear them up and support their healing and find, our, find ourselves in the process following Jesus and joining the Spirit's work in the Father's world. The church is called to bring the resources of the kingdom, the wisdom, peacemaking, creativity, healing, justice, mercy, humility, all these things to bear upon the deep troubles of our culture. Now here at Vox, uh, we actually began this calendar year with a theme. Uh, it seems like so long ago now, but the theme was we were going to have a year of respond, uh, a focus on joining the Spirit's work in the world in 2020. Now when we prayerfully set ourselves in that direction, we did not know, <laughs> maybe that's an understatement, we did not know what this year would bring. When we, when we started out, we had no concept of pandemics or the re-exposure of systemic racism or, or even just the deepening divisions of the citizens of, uh, of our country along the lines of preferred news sources. But here we are. And here the Spirit has led us. And here we are invited to join the Spirit's work in the world. You know, the, 
The heart of God has always been the same. Back in Proverbs 31, 8 and 9, it says, Speak up for the people who have no voice, for the rights of all the down and outers. Speak out for justice. Stand up for the poor and destitute. That's in Proverbs. Later on, Jesus further reveals that that God's kingdom belongs to the powerless, to the poor. Now, these are, are both included in what we call the word of God because these words put us in the company of the heart of God and on the trail of the swirling spirit of Jesus. And so this week, be encouraged. Do not lose heart. Do not lose hope. God's kingdom is not in trouble. The spirit still hovers over the deep, over the chaos of even our historical moment and draws near to us to heal whatever we are willing to have healed in ourselves, in our families, and even among our nation and our world. Amen. Let's continue with a prayer that was written by Dallas Willard. Lord Jesus Christ, we are so thankful that you have said, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We are so thankful for the ease with which you walked upon this earth, the generosity and kindness you showed to people, the devotion with which you cared for those who were out of the way and in trouble, the extent to which you even loved your enemies and laid down your life for them. We are so thankful to believe that this is a life for us, a life without lack, a life of sufficiency. It's so clear in you the sufficiency of your Father and the fullness of life that was poured through you And we're so thankful that you have promised that same love, that same life, that same joy, that same power for us. Lord, slip up on us today. Get past our defenses, our worries, our concerns. Gently open our souls and speak your word into them. We believe you want to do it, and we wait for you to do it now. In your name, amen. Let us continue with a time of prayer. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us confess to God and to one another the ways in which we have sinned and have worked against God's plan for his creation and for his church and have participated in human systems that have damaged the image of God and other human creatures through what we have done and what we have left undone. Let us make confession. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, In our indifference to injustice and cruelty, accept our repentance, Lord. And now, swirling wind of God, blow far from us all dark despair, all deep distress, all groundless fears, all sinful desires, all Satan's snares, all false values, all selfish wishes, all wasteful worries. And swirling wind of God, blow into us your holy presence, your living love, your healing touch, your splendid courage, your mighty strength, your perfect peace, your caring concern, your divine grace, and your boundless joy. Wind of God, blow strong, blow fresh, and blow now. And now let's take a moment to make our requests known to God. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us and forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. And because we have peace with God through Christ, we are a community that makes peace with one another. So I invite you to turn to those around you wherever you are or if you're uh, on your own, you can look out a window to recognize your neighbors and let's speak peace to one another in the name of Jesus.
Well, with our generous financial giving, we are seeking to keep fidelity with one another and, and especially with those among us who have any need or know of any need during this time. Uh, so please contact us at, at vox.church online with any needs that you would like us to know about. If you're able to give to the ministry of, of what God is doing through the ministry of Vox these days, uh, you can give online at vox.church and know that your giving will be faithfully deployed to making a difference to people encountering the kingdom of God. Jesus reminded us that all the earth is God's when he said, freely you have received, and so freely give. And so let us pray. Father, you are an abundant giver. There's nothing that I have that you have not given me. The way of your kingdom is the way of generosity. Help me to honor you with my resources. Free me from the deceit of riches. Lead me on the path of generosity for your glory, Lord, and for the abundance of my own life and for the sake of others. Amen. from our ways oh God oh God for we have turned away from you Lord have mercy sin we return to you father heal your world make all things new make all things new
And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace both now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.